Oh my God, Susan. What the fuck? Hi, right, friends. Host Eric here. Host Todd and Finch people. As you can see, I got the Arch Admin Susie behind me. <laughs> Tonight, we're discussing the important question Does hat determine your type? <laughs> now, I'm an <coughs> ENTP, or at least I thought I was, but today I found myself wearing this hat, feeling a little bit more like an ESTJ. Susie, I see you've got a pretty special hat on there. Um, pretty special hat. I want to know, does that hat make you feel like a specific type? Yeah, I think I recently upgraded to ENTJ. ENTJ, wow, mm -hmm. that's nice. A lot more SE in the mix now for you. Yeah, it's the hat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you jealous of my hat now? That hat comes with SE. This hat comes with TE. Comes free. So what does this SE hat mean? Does this mean you like make more friends or less? <laughs> <laughs> it means she shoots more people. I make I make more people want to try being my friend until they discover that they don't like me. <laughs> well, Susie, it's when you get for wearing that hat. <laughs> you want this with that hat. Hey, what about you? If you saw Susie on the street with that hat. Yeah, I'd be like, damn, she's fucking pulling it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be looking at her and smile and give her that nod like, yeah, you got it. You, you would find a way to I'm not walking in your lane. So this is the first event of the, what you might call... The TWFP latter half of June. It's approximately a period of two weeks in which it's going to be a lot of exciting live activities. I've got this hologram of Susie behind me live from Norway. Um, lifelike as hell. You can I can even smell the smoke. Um, Abraham's here off camera. Love uh, you guys. <laughs> yeah. He loves you guys. And uh, Kimberly's here as well. She can see her hand there. So, as I mentioned, this is the first of a series of exciting of exciting activities that will be coming in the coming couple of weeks. And uh, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, queries, or other matters of interest they'd like to chat about in the live chat, I would gladly respond accordingly to the question. Let me pull this bong rib now. Can I use that, please? Can I use El Twercho? In a minute. Okay. I'm going to use El Twercho in a minute. So, my last attempt at live streaming was rather rudely interrupted by my dementia addled mother's agitation but uh you know something you just gotta she started getting agitated out here i i liked him for about five minutes right when we first got here on friday and uh what'd she say well she's just got in, to she's go. got to go she's got important places to go she's got important things to do <laughs> Over there. It's cancer. <laughs> okay, well, Doesn't sound like anybody wants to say anything. if you are currently wearing a hat and are curious about what type it makes you, you can tell me what sort of hat it is, and I can tell it by about 95 percent percent accuracy what type it makes you. So, how would an ENTJ and INFJ relationship or friendship look like pan out? That's assuming no hats, I take it. Um, it okay, a question for the hatless relationship. Let's see. Andy and INFJ? I don't think it's going to work out. Wearing a fedora, what type are you? INTP or INTJ? One of the two. Wearing a backward hat makes you ESTP. It depends on the kind of hat. 
you would have said more ISFJ construction guy for me in my hat. Uh, I'd say I'm saying I'm going ESTJ because look, I'm not just a regular guy. I'm a senior subcontractor administrator. W. A. <laughs> Boone Jr. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. You got the officer red visor going. See, that says, that says, uh, T.E. Polar? T.E. Polar. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, did, it definitely has an ESTJ by Gio Nigi Yugi. By the way, Gio Nigi Yugi, you need to take better care of your sofa. You're going to get spots on it. Um, let's see. Greetings, Angin Tier. I ENTJ and INFJ relationship or friendship. A well, friendship might pan out fine, but the thing is, when you're talking about Dom um tool and in, in one and then polar eight the other you're talking about supervision supervision right yeah okay yeah no that's not good don't do it you're yeah it. it's not fun it's not no. fun being in a supervisorial it's relationship it's fun until it's not fun right and when it's not fun it's not fun at all okay Jay Stewart you're wearing a dunce cap Hmm. I think that makes you INTP, maybe? Oh, wait. No, not INTP. <laughs> my mom's, my, she, you know, she's devolving. She's getting younger by a very uh, curious case of Benjamin Button, you know? It's like she's getting younger. Um, let's see. Yeah, a supervision relationship is stressful for for both parties, really. But one party, especially the supervisee, and the other party, the supervisor, is feeling kind of like just kind of like eye rolly a little bit periodically. You've got polar beret, so you can't be an INFP. <laughs> well, um, you know. It's not just berets that are, that's what it's normally considered, but it's polar. If you're a polar beret, you're polar all floppy hats. A little known fact. Any floppy hat qualifies as a beret in cognitive functions. Beanie. That makes you INFP. INFP. A party hat, but the elastic is broken. ESFP. ESFP. <laughs> INFP hat is greasy hair. No. Also, ETP, ETP. What, what, what do you get that we're wearing a beanie all the time? <laughs> you get greasy hair. Do you? Yes. Only if you smear grease on your beanie. You do from your scalp. No. <laughs> if you wear a hat that's smeared in bacon grease, <coughs> it'll make your hair smell good. Okay, but if, what if, if it's not oil, then what is that moisture coming out of INFP's head? Sweat. No, no. That's just saline dampness. Does having third slot FE cause an individual self-worth to be met on the connections with the people? Yes, more or less. Is that so much self-worth as it is self-concept? We need to make, we need to have a, a, a certain level of confirmation slash affirmation externally to maintain our self-concept. And it's usually pretty easy to maintain because over time we develop, uh, you know, scripts that, can that the torch so I can stare at play well or poorly, you know. <laughs> I'm right there. Um, okay, I got a hoodie on because my headset hurts my ears without some extra cushion. Oh, okay. So hmm. <laughs> that sounds ISTJ to me. <laughs> well, I think you've become. Oh, it has flaps over in the ears. You're an ISTJ now, Jordan Spike. Uh, oh no, you're not the same as Luke Eden. Luke Eden, you're ISTJ. Jordan Spike, the hat that has flaps over the ears and is fuzzy. It depends if it's cold. If it's not cold, then you're an ISFJ. If it is cold, you're an ISTJ. You look like your stereotypical angry metalhead. Hmm. I don't know what type that is. ENFP. Yeah, 
So, one of the activities that we're going to do here in the next couple of minutes as part of our activities planning is talk about possible activities we might do. One of the planned activities is to have this discussion. So, I want to throw some ideas out there and let's see what Susie thinks. Yes. For example, idea number one, paying for gold. What do you think? It could be fun. It could be fun. Now, listen. I would have fun watching. Let me explain something. Probably there's a lot of gold in them Nar Hills. It hasn't been mined because when's the last time people really went out and paying for gold? A lot of people do. Plus, a lot of people do. Oh, really? That's nice of him. Matata says Michael Pierce mentioned me in his recent video. Interesting. Did he link it? I'd like to see it. It's called All About Scrotums, the video. <laughs> and he said mine is one of the more wrinkly that he's ever seen. <laughs> apparently. Yours isn't wrinkly, it's smooth. Uh, Mentos Jones has a non hat question. It's okay. <laughs> That's, I appreciate your uh, your disclaimer there. Quick non hat question. As an INFP, who is your supervisor? Who is INFP supervisor? ESFP. ESFP. Oh, yeah. INFPs always say they don't feel supervised by ESFPs, though. Um, yeah, well, a lot of people have told me that. Redeemed 44. They say I've got more surface area. Than any other. <laughs> it's just, you know, for something you can fit in a cupped hand, three acres in surface area, it means a lot of wrinkles. Uh, okay, the next expansion team are the TWFP Hatties. So we've got to prepare for the NBA draft. Okay, I didn't know we were getting a team. That's good to know. Apparently, we're getting an NBA team, TWFP guys. TWFP people of the world, we're going to an NBA team. I want Kawhi Leonard. Have you guys heard about Kawhi Leonard's Apple Time, Apple Time story? No. So this comedian put up a fake a fake news story, a link. Supposedly he was quoting a news story, but it was just he made it up. And the story goes as follows. So Kawhi Leonard, back when he was at the Spurs, he went out to dinner with the team one night. And when the waiter came around and said, What would you like to what would you like to eat? He said, No, nah, I'm good. And he pulled out a bag with twelve apples in it. And he proceeded to eat each of the twelve apples with a knife and fork. And <laughs> and he said uh, when he after the waiter asked him like what do you want? He said, No, nah, I'm good. He said Apple time, apple time. And he pulled out this bag of 12 apples and he ate them all with a knife and fork. So, um, the point of it is, that's hilarious. And a lot of people believed it was true. And <laughs> they said, did you hear Kawhi Leonard? Like, he went out to dinner with his whole team in a fancy restaurant. And they can't tell him to order, he pulled out a bag of apples. And he said, apple time, apple time. <laughs> and he ate all 12 of them with a knife and fork. How brilliant is that? That's so just it's so beautiful. Um I resemble Hunter S. Thompson in my mannerisms. Hmm. Well, I mean I do think Hunter S. Thompson was an EP. Okay, so Redeem 44 votes against panning for gold. Let's talk about our next option. Panty for gold is just one of the options we have here. Um, option two. Pan for copper. <laughs> Why would you do that? Well, it's presumably it's more plentiful than gold. It must be. It's cheaper, right? We could pan for silver. Sounds good, too. We could pan for dirt. <laughs> Where are you going to keep the dirt? Well, I mean, my point is we can get a lot of that, probably. <laughs> okay, so... Low effort. 
Yeah, that's my game. It's low hanging fruit, right? Nobody's out there panning for dirt right now. <laughs> they do every single day. Geo Niggy Woo Yugi's got a good point. Pan for water. <laughs> Eric does that too. That's every a day. really good idea. That's really easy. He cans for water and yeah, dirt. Pan for pants. What type is well liked and popular but doesn't want to hang out with others? ISFJ. Kimberly says ISFJ. To a certain extent, ENTP is actually can be like that. It depends on their mood. Uh, it depends on how hungry they are. <laughs> when right? hungry, when hungry, they really don't want to hang out with other people. Yeah. Even when food is served. Well, until the food's digested a little bit and they get decrankified. But what, when, what about when they refuse to decrankify? Well, then that means they went to bed. <laughs> um, okay. Option number two. The other thing we could do. We could go hat shopping at various thrift stores for hats. We already have hats. Well, we have some hats. No, you have one for <laughs> Becky. You have one for... Susie, the only one you need one is for Spacey. We need to get a hat for Spacey. So okay. we're on the hunt for a Spacey hat. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. Um, be, in honor of her Canadianness, we got Becky. Don't tell her anybody, okay? Shh. We got her uh, Niagara Falls hat. A captain's hat. Because Niagara Falls is on the border of Canada and the United States. See? Makes perfect sense. Um, let's see. Option number three, we could go fishing. We could go fishing in the river. We could go fishing in the lake. We could go fishing off of the pier down by the ocean. It's so great. Fishing? The plan, no. says Hero Lamb, is to make fishing? more plans but never do any of them. Well, right now we're positing possible plans. We're not actually making it. We, fishing. fishing is one of them, though. Another possible plan. Let's talk about this one. Go to Yukaipa and to the apple orchards down there from Riley's Farm. They've got thrift, stops, thrift shops and antique places. They've got. Is that on the way home from Palm Springs? Sort of. Could be. Could yeah. On the way home from Palm Springs. Uh, I don't know. Because usually summertime Palm Springs will beat you down. Like usually on the way back home because this that's my experience. You kinda of just want to go back home because it gets my <laughs> it gets real hot. That's knowing. I'm the master of the physical realm and you sir the metaphysical. Hmm. Um I think really think FE is much more responsible for empathy than FI. I find FI users are often so focused on their own feelings they fail to take the time to empathize with others. Well, I don't really agree with you there. I mean, I think that it plays out to an FE user as though there's a lack of empathy, but it's more like they're empathetic within their own little group, you know. I haven't been feeling good last couple of days. Can't feel motivated or inspired, which drives me. I'm used to especially work heavily very early on it. Our emotions are hard. Uh, I mean, it's normal for me, Jim Barton, and I'm polar up high, and it's not emotions, really. I don't think. I don't think we have to be emotions, but I go through periods of... I'm totally at the mercy of my moods, whatever that means. Um, like Kimberly will tell you whether or not I get shit done or I'm going to handle mood or not and entirely on my mood and my I'm pretty fussy it's like I got to be kind of managed on a careful basis of uh, oh, yeah, I always the diaper bag huh? mm -hmm. the diaper bag <laughs> uh, I'll carry a diaper bag with me and TP mail I mean, it's really your Jamie, relationship underwear, with pants, sweatshirt, snacks, a drink, extra I, lighter. I think trips. everybody's relationship with their introverted functions are going to be, um, are going to be counter 
to doing shit in general. Oh my god, Susan looks so serious. Serious? I'm just wearing that. She looks like she's giving everybody the best stare. Well, she's just keeping an eye on people, making sure they don't break any typological laws. <laughs> I think a couple already have. <laughs> um, I can always deal with it. It's just the emotions are so intense. I'm not sure if it's normal if I'm just being dramatic. <laughs> they hit my chest like waves for no reason sometimes. I mean, I think it's perfectly normal, frankly, Jim Barton. Uh, I don't have a lot of of awareness of my emotions, but they still hit me like waves like that too, you know? I sometimes watching commercials, something happens in a commercial that's like slightly inspiring or whatever. Here comes Hero Lamb with his whale come again. <laughs> Hero Lamb, for the millionth time, we cannot constantly be talking about whale semen. <sighs> Maybe he just really likes it. Yeah, well, we, he's, he's an aficionado, he says. He's an aficionado of the spermaceti. Having double deliberation is like having a double barrel shotgun that you never fire. If I win a million dollars, we'll have a nice party. <laughs> An example of this is the difference between my wife who is forced slot FI and myself who is forced slot FE. I am much more sensitive to the feelings of others than she is. Well, I mean, the thing is, I would point out that we're a lot more active probably with our eighth slot function than our fourth. So, I demonstrate a lot more <coughs> SE than I do SI, even though I'm willful in my SI and I'm not really willful in my SE. So, um, if you're a fourth slot FI, you know, if you're a fourth slot FE, then you're demonstrating more FI, really, in the world. Because you've got a deliberation one and eight. But if you're, I mean, TI first, then, uh, I mean, if you're TE first, then uh, you're an interface type. So, I mean, obviously, a deliberation first is going to be stronger in both deliberation functions than an interface first type. I'm wearing a black and purple and turquoise jester hat. What type does that mean I am? Um, well, it does strongly suggest polar FE. <laughs> a non-committing type of person indecisive, so you chose everything instead of one thing, a horse mongoor. Hmm. Your ass looks like a confused ape. You can't see my ass, MLG. I know because yeah, I'm sitting on it currently. Well, how many apes did he confuse to recognize that pattern? Right. You know, would it be better if my ass looked like an unconfused ape? And what does that look like? Hmm. How, how do you distinguish between the confused apes and the non-confused apes? Is the facial expression basically the same as it is for human beings? Is the facial expression you're making right now, MLG? Do you define people as apes? <sighs> I don't think M MLG can follow quite all of this. This is talk. TWFP is sex and abstract concept for me. Yeah, yes. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of it's mostly about what it means, I guess. It's, except for when it's not, you know? <laughs> except for when you just gotta, you just feel like you gotta get your hump on, you know? <laughs> um, so, let's see. My SE feels weaker than my SI, but I bite and I more than any. Well, 
I mean, the thing is, when we're talking about weakness or strength, it's kind of we're missing the distinction that's being made, which is front stack's really willful and intentional. The back stack's intentional but not willful, and so therefore sometimes runs counter to your willful intentions. Um there is the, the distinction between how you use functions is not one of effectiveness, per se. It's, it's like the dominant function functions as an implicit value. It's, it's of a category distinct than the second slot function, which functions as an instrumental value, or the third slot function, which functions as a scorecard or payoff or something. Is that a cop in the background? Yes, it is. Sort of. <laughs> That's Susie. That's a Susie. And what happened is she got a magical hat. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of... T-E-M-S-E and -E absolutely no S-I. There's a lot of magic in these hats. Okay, There's so nothing real in this hat. If you are afraid of too much magic... Don't put on one of these hats. <clears throat> Come on, Eric. Feel it in your senses. Quit with meaning. Well, you know, I obviously, I do in the moment. But, you know, that doesn't seem to be very significant. A bold patch? Do I have a bold patch? Oh, my God. Which part of me is more bold than the other parts? Oh, ball. Oh, my bald patch. Are you sure it's not a bald patch? I think it's a pretty bold, bald patch. Um, Thank you. OMLG. You've got to, if you, if you misspell words like that when you're trolling, it kind of makes you look a little foolish. Um, FI users aren't projecting. They're deducing the only possible conclusion about what you might be feeling, and they feel exactly what you do, and FI user doesn't. Right. FI DOMs especially are going to be very effective at putting their, themselves in other people's shoes. you got to remember the slot makes a big difference. So I'm very ineffective at putting myself in other people's shoes. That's like the last thing I ever think to do. Aren't the polar test testing how effectively you use a particular function? Well, I mean, you got to remember that effectiveness always links to a, a goal or attainment. So if you're saying, how effective is it in manifesting the self? Well, it's as effective as it ought to be given the role that it has. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, You know, it doesn't quite work like that. But what it is saying is that when you can find an element of a process that correlates that closely to the skill set, then you can more easily test the skill set deficit than you can at strength. Because if there's a complete deficit in a skill set, then it's it's determinate. You know, it's a, it's a binary. You need to find some sort of binary for the testing to be worthwhile. So, um yeah let's see who was the person that got uninvited if i may be so bold oh i don't want to i don't want to name names uh what's my what biggest regret girl what a fancy girl hmm. that's what showing a girl looks like yeah 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 Probably my biggest regret has to do with a state championship tournament where I didn't take advantage of time I had before final round where we could have been state champions, should have been state champions, and I was fucking around. Yeah, but that's probably my biggest regret that I can think of <coughs> in, my, in my whole life. <laughs> I let those kids down. I let myself down. I was being lazy. Um, <coughs> I think Kimberly enjoys your joke, MLG. <laughs> that is, uh, 
Yeah, uh, INTJ Barber, so we can NI your hair back into existence. I don't think NI works like that, though. You look like you stink. <laughs> do I have the little green lines coming off of me, like in the cartoons? Or what? I probably do stink a little right now. I got, I just finished doing a bunch of manual labor right before I started this live stream. I had to uh, get the basement ready for my house guests. I think high slot FV can compromise itself in terms of empathy. It seems to limit the ability to clearly let someone know when they're being unsafe. Why I don't think it's fully linked to empathy. Well, there is that sort of harm prevention aspect to FI. FI definitely includes harm prevention in a way that FE doesn't necessarily include harm prevention. So, you know, you can see like FE third slot people trying to show off doing something dangerous or whatever. And, uh, and that's not that's not harm prevention there. What? Is it a cop? No, it's just the neighbor woman across the street. Um <coughs> so uh yeah, whatever I was saying. What to do when everything Not gets too what to do when everything gets too close to your heart? You know, I really don't know. Um, what I do is I sleep when things get too close to my heart. Um, when I have too much uh, FE, I mean FI experience, when there's too much real emotion happening in me, then I need to go sleep. But that's just me. I think that your, your seventh kind of translates into your fourth, whatever those two things are. So, you know, that would imply that when Susie needs to do shit, she gets F.E. going. <laughs> you know? Now he says you look like a retarded Ben Stiller. <laughs> Who does? Me? Oh. Well, here you're, you're getting points from Kimberly, MLG. That's pretty good. A retarded Ben Stiller. Hmm. So the, I guess we can conclude then that we now know what a confused ape mm -hmm. looks like. It looks like a retarded Ben Stiller. <laughs> right? That's what we can logically deduce. Um, it's mostly types with weak empire think it's a projection or assumption. TI types aren't skilled to tell when some of the intentions are. Yeah, I, well, I can tell when somebody's trying to, to play me, usually. So, uh, I'm pretty good at telling intentions. But the thing is, that's assuming they're, they're trying to, like, scam me or something like that, right, in the moment. If they're, I can't tell their intentions are good or bad overall until they start to try to, to do something, kind of. Oh, you still haven't heard of hat determines your type. The answer is definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you want to be your true type, you should take Actually, off your I hat. Think, I, think, I think Dario Nardi actually expressed the surface on that subject uh, as he placed the specific hats over our heads as we... Mm. Mm. I don't think your microphone would pick up what everyone says. The girl in the back looks cool. She is cool. That's Susie. Susie? Mm -hmm. she's, okay. also, she's also known as the girl in the back. Tell us it's it? introverted thinker. It's introverted thinker. Oh yeah, if you if you've been in the live chat before and you've seen introverted thinker around here, this introverted thinker she flew all the way out to from Norway just to do this live stream. Mm -hmm. I look like I smell rustic. <laughs> Why is everyone talking about how you smell? I, don't know, I guess because MLGs. Maybe because it makes you laugh. M L M A O. You think you're clever? Um, yeah. You're taking weak shots at Emmett. I'm, you're just I'm pretty. Yourself. I'm pretty clever. No doubt about that. It would be false modesty to say otherwise. <coughs> Tell Joey Joe what the. <laughs> oh, Joey Joe 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 few days in this timeshare in Palm Springs and we're thinking about heading down there and then 
we you. could meet we'll with you. you. You're in the neighborhood, sort of, yeah. Well, we can talk about this some other time. This is not an appropriate menu for discussing the logistics. No, I know that, but just let her know that we need to con. We need yeah, to we'll need to contact you. So if you have my phone number or whatever, Kimberly, text her, text me, and and then I'll give you her phone number. Something like that. Yeah, we do have a quadruple going on. And up, uh, very observant. For those of you who don't know, a quadruple is if you have all four members and only all four members of a quadrant in a group in a room, such as Alpha Quadra here, we've got ENTP, INTP, ISFJ, ESFJ. That's called a quadrable. And what does it cause? It causes elation. Yes, that's true. I read it one time on a website. Therefore, it's true. That one place, that <laughs> one truth, that one time. Mm -hmm. It has to be true. Yeah. Weed helps me detach from my emotions very well. The only thing that keeps me sane, I think. He who is the ESFJ in the quadro? Well, that would be Abraham. Abraham's off screen, but you can see him in the darkness over there. <laughs> and Kimberly there too. Kimberly is, is a little bit what we might call Kimura shy. Kimura's make her feel shy. So, uh, I don't think that weed does a whole hell of a lot to me. Um, calms you down a little bit. Just calm me down a little bit. <clears throat> Horse model where I'm not going to ask about that. Um, I don't even know what Norway's finest is. Let me see what Shreddy Chandran says here. How does TI manifest in the third slot? IXFJs don't seem to like arguing or debating. Then how would that result in maintaining their third slot TI's hidden agenda of being argumentationally right? Well, um... Maybe they just want to be right. They... What it boils down to is it's, an, it's a complement to an interface. Thing. They're interfaces by nature. They know that their interface modality is maximally attained when they can have it collaborating, collaborating with their de deliberative modality. So since they naturally want to interface with everything, but they know that some things in life require a deliberation and action approach. So when they're able to incorporate the deliberation side of it, it's fine. They'll get the action from the interface anyway. Uh, and sim similarly with an ENTP, it's like, I'm going to approach everything with my deliberation tool function and my action deliberation approach. And then when things go best, it's when I've got it also in the mix collaboratively with my FE so that it's positioned well for people to enjoy it and think positively. Of me, so. <sighs> Let's see. What? To do when you feel like you'll ascend another dimension soon mentally. Ooh, are you experiencing a spiritual chrysalis? Now, a lot of people want to know how to attain spiritual metamorphosis into a spiritual butterfly or moth. And the answer is first, you need to enter into your spiritual chrysalis. You're going to need to, to weave that out of some goo you put out of your butt. Uh, ideally in a closet or a dark corner. And uh, then at that point, you should be able to gestate for the required nine weeks or whatever. And then when you emerge, you'll be level level 17. All right, you got a split, Joey Joe. See you later. <laughs> I have an alpha quadruple when I'm with my parents and grandma. That's cool. I must think for a nice family, huh? Place names finest refers to the locality's police force. Oh, I didn't know that. So, are you too short to make to become a police officer in Norway, Susie? Not anymore. Not anymore. They changed the rules. Okay, now you can be anything between three foot and ten foot and to be in Norway's Norway's police force. Did someone actually ask about that? <laughs> so I got enlightened on C.S. Joseph's new self-actualization program. Yeah, dude, recommend totally. Well, great. For those of you who want to attain the black belt in actualization, 
you should go to C.S. Joseph. He's handing them out. And, you know, it's it's important. <laughs> I mean, you know, you I think you get 10% off at Subway. Uh, I'm not sure. You get a number of benefits when you're enlightened. To address an earlier topic, why would EXTPs be the least private type? Because sharing certain kinds of information would result in people having negative perceptions of this running file of their FE third slot. Um, well, I mean, maybe here's the thing I, I find as an ENTP that there are very few pieces of information that aren't best addressed. By, by openly addressing them as like, um, well, this is something that I'm insecure about or whatever. Because it basically invalidates the claim itself that you're making, you know? And so it's, it's, the other thing is, as you sort of desensitize towards those kind of things, then they genuinely cease to matter. Is your hero penetrating my demon? Most of the time, most of the time it is. What to do when everyone approaches you negatively but got the wrong impression? Well, martial arts, I'm somebody who has a long history of making bad first impressions and having to sort of redeem myself, which, uh, which is true with Kimberly, for example. I got off to a bit of a rough start with her, and I had to redeem myself. Susie here helped me. I'm reading me a little bit in her eyes, and uh, and I just sort of had to interface it, you know. That's the thing about the third slot function is it's the modality you use when your tool function gets you into trouble, um, and that's what ends up happening. My tool function gets me into trouble. Not all things in life are are best served by addressing with your tool function, and certainly that's the case with TI as it is any function. Yeah, you're on tonight. Needed the company for a long ass drive cross country. I see. Well, if you're crossing the United States of America, there are no short drives. There's no short route across. First lot FP can be very charming, flexible. Can be. It can also be very fussy, depending on my mood. You know, it's like I'm usually not on live streaming when I'm not in a pretty cheerful mood or uh, feeling like doing it, you know, it's, it's nice to, uh, it's nice to do when I feel like doing it. Uh, hello, Blue Nowhere. Nice to see you. <coughs> are there any STJs who are interested in typology? Well, there's, uh, Jordan Spike. He's around here and he's an ESTJ. Rather knowledgeable about it. Because there's little FI behind it. That's why I enjoy this. Um, I, I guess because there's little FI in it. Uh, I mean, I, I find it actually one of my my more... I guess my FE is, is better in this context in the sense that uh, I find it... Well, I talk to a lot of INFPs and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things in the chat for me to engage with that are both, I guess, FI appealing to me in some sense, maybe. Or they just maybe just fit in my wheelhouse. I don't know. My dad is ISTJ, and he's pretty interested. Out of him and the ESFJ mom, he definitely enjoys listening to Ramble about it the most. Hmm. Well, they are seeking an E, ISTJs, so that makes sense. I don't think we need to have this fan on anymore. It's pretty chilly in here. We don't want to freeze. So, yeah, we don't get a lot of STJs and um, or even SFJs in the typology community. Kimberly and Abraham are here tonight because they're associated with NTPs. Susie and I they're club. Susie and I knew each other by a TWFP before 
um, before either of us knew Abraham and Kimberly, respectively. So, uh, you seem to get sarcastic when you get irritated or trying to avoid saying something. How you really feel like Mr. Joseph? Well, am I being sarcastic about C.S. Joseph? I mean, I, I, I would say that's not very well hidden disdain. I've been open in my critique and, and rejection of the notion that he has anything of particular value to say on multiple occasions. So it's not like I'm trying to be coy. No, you're just not feeling so about him. Oh, I do. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the whole thing. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I really particularly care. People keep bringing him up to me, you know. Yeah, I get a lot of comments about him in the live chat, so I respond to a lot of things about him. And just does it, does it have a certain impact on your comfort levels? I don't think so. See, it's Joseph. I mean, it's not like he's. It's not like I feel challenged or threatened by him at all, you know. Um. I'm not sure who I would feel that way about exactly, but I just find him, I guess. What about the Dave Superpowers thing? What do I, what do I think about Dave Superpowers? Yeah, like you did that interview thing together and it looked like you both were ready to go, but nothing happened. I mean, I just don't think there's, look, I don't want to, thanks Tyler Peterson, you're the best. This bong rip's for you. I got a transubstantiated bong rip for Tyler Peterson. Susie, can you be a yeah. lamb? Thank you, Susie. Susie's being a lamb. I appreciate that. Um. Uh, yeah, thanks. Actually, I'm going to smoke a little bit of this. See, Kimberly's always stashing away little hidden nugs everywhere. Um, because she says, otherwise I smoke it too fast. Well, and she can't find them, and you know, but uh, I, you know, MLG, I don't understand the kids' shirt thing. It's like, are you saying my shirt's too small for me, or that it's childlike in its design? What's your critique? Um. Oh, no, DSP did not care to argue his points at all because he he knows he's not equipped to, to win that argument. Same thing with C.S. Joseph, right? That's why they don't really want to argue with me about it. And that's just how it is. How many times have I... Why would you ask me that, you call me Mike? Um, I haven't counted. I haven't kept count. Was I supposed to keep track of that? Um, let's see. Why do you say EXCP's release paradigm types? Oh, that question again. I just, it's because privacy means you can't talk it out. So for ENTVs in particular, privacy means you can't talk it out. If you're keeping your ship private, then we can't discuss it. You, you don't have to. You don't have to justify it. You're not expecting yourself to justify it, and you know. So as a consequence, any TI is not going to like that very much. Jordan Spike says, "I like typology for many reasons. From the top of my head, it's a good way for me to understand the truth about myself and others in a way. Understanding others seems basic." Um, MLG, you've spent 40 minutes listening to my live stream. So if you don't have enough sense to get it out of the ring, I mean, you're going to get wet. What do I think about the 48 Laws of Power? I think it's very power-focused. Uh, 
All right. I was supposed to transubstantiate that for Tyler Peterson. I forgot to, though. I'm going to have to do another one. <coughs> well, to think about this typology stuff, why it seems like never ending. Well, it doesn't have to be never ending. I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on it at this point. You know, it's there's still things that I need to figure out, and I need to find some better correlations between X or Y or whatever. But, uh, you know, I got the gist of the system down. It's not that complicated. Is that Tom Cruise in the background? I don't know. What are you talking about? The guitar? The black thing? This hand? Is that Tom Cruise's hand? Oh, it must be the hat. Uh, it's the hat. It's Jennifer Lawrence. It's uh, Scarlett Johansson. I bring her around and have her give me blowjobs sometimes. All right, see you later, Scarlett. She's leaving right now, though. That's Susie right there. But Scarlett Johansson was here a second ago. Blowing me. Yeah, she was under the table. Yeah. I know I need one for all of them. I don't really have it for FE. I do have it for TI and SI for sure. My any polar test is a little iffy. But uh, I need them for all of them. I agree. But, you know, I, reality is reality is different than than the thing that I would like it to be. MLG, you don't have to be a genius to see that you're weak as fuck, all right? It's it's pretty self-evident. I know this is a sensitive subject, but Jordan Peterson, what about Jordan Peterson? Yeah, what about him? You mean my hero, Jordan Peterson? He's an INTP, huh? I don't think so. Pretty sure he's not. You know, he hilariously said the following thing. If you have a memory from your past, from your distant past, and you still remember it and it keeps coming back to you periodically, then that means that's a serious thing that needs to be resolved. Because, of course, otherwise you wouldn't have any SI. Right? <laughs> it's such an ENTJ thing to say. It's such an ENTJ thing as that. Or ENFJ. He could be an ENFJ. I wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me. He, he does seem awfully good at faking, you know, in a way. What do intuitors do in an orgy? You mean a pretend orgy that we're talking about in a joke? Those are the kind of orgies that we typically participate in. Um. Really, Blue Nowhere? Are you sure? <laughs> okay, so do you have any other strategy? Man. I mean, you, you kind of repeated your first one. I don't know. It was the orangutan thing. First one was confused, Dave. This one malnourished orangutan. Yeah, Kimberly's not here, so there's no one to laugh. Yeah. I don't even think she'd laugh at that one. Oh, I didn't see it. So, yeah, you aren't very good at what you're doing. What strain am I smoking? Well, I still forgot to transubstantiate it. So this is called Diamond OG. This one I didn't have a name on it. It was one of the two connoisseur shelf weaves I got yesterday, and the lady forgot to put a sticker on it that says what the name is. So I don't know exactly, but this is a very dense. This stuff's super dense, and it's kind of a weird, like decently taste to it um maybe like some kind of derivative of jet fuel or something it's 
Does Susie smoke Kush? No, Susie's not a huge smoker. Um, I haven't passed the duty to the left hand side as of yet, but I'm gonna transubstantiate this one right now for you, Tyler Peterson. I hereby transubstantiate this phone rip. <sighs> Hope you're not driving. <laughs> Nowhere says I would just block MLG chat. They only have the power to give them on like, Well, right now he's entertaining me well enough. You know, what's funny is is I'll ignore him for a long stretch of time. They get very frustrated and put more exclamation points, and then I'll say something about him just to keep him tagging along, and then I'll ignore him for a long stretch of time. He'll get all stompy, and then. I'll say something about him real quick, and then I'll ignore him. You know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, he's me, Zen <clears throat> A hey to Susie, please. A hey to Susie. Hey to Susie. Uh, postmodern neo-Marxism, oh shit, JP vibes. Yeah, no postmodern neo-Marxism, please. Uh, we want to... The neo Marxists is fine, postmodern is fine, but the postmodern neo Marxists are not okay. All right. I want everyone to see that. How would Jordan Peterson be an ENFJ? Such curiosity, Brady, and new perspectives. Well, does he? Is that true, Alex Bathia? Are you sure about that? Um, no, I don't block people from speaking in the chat or dare disagree or criticize me. It takes a, it takes something that's unacceptable in some way for me to, for me to block somebody usually, or if I'm in a pissy mood, sometimes I will. Yeah, I probably got a little bit of a crush on me. That's fine. Um... Brittany who? Spears? If Britney Spears were 19 and single, and I were 19 and single, or if I were single at all, yes, I would. If if I would, I would definitely fuck 19-year-old Britney Spears if I were single. She was hot as fuck at 19. Capitalism Ahoy. Peterson is, is an NI tool user, from what I can tell, which is to say he uses his introverted intuition rather bluntly sometimes. And he views things through specific frames that don't deserve the primacy that he affords them. He doesn't question the primacy that he affords his frames. It's a lot of problems with the guy. But, you know, he's better than a lot of other people. His TI is broad and developed for a TE user. I agree with you. But I don't think it's broad and developed for their idealist. See, it's like I have some perspectives as well about Islam and stuff. But when you put it like that, then it crosses a certain line. You're just making ontological assaults on people. You know, just because you're Muslim doesn't mean there's anything that's wrong with you at all. So reducing people to members of the, to individual, reducing individuals to members of their group is bullshit. 
Now, having said that, I, I walk some very thin lines when I talk about my position on Islam and stuff like that. Which is to say, I don't like lots of aspects of that culture. I think it's opposed to free expression as a culture. We can see this is a reasonable claim to make because we can look at, for example, Egypt and their strong opposition to this American filmmaker made this anti-Islam movie and wanted they wanted to extradite him and put him in jail or whatever. Now, you might say, well, Eric, you just put their idealist in time out for saying shit about Muslims. Yeah, but partially that's a TE thing. I might not necessarily do that, except I know YouTube's very attentive to issues of hate speech. And I generally agree that the straight up hate speech is it's just lame. So if something crosses the line, then I'll tend to uh I'll tend to, to nix it. So, uh, he spent 16 hours a day for years writing maps of meaning. Okay. Do you think type is more nature or nurture? I don't know. Probably nature. Don't ontologically rape me. We need to enforce the ontological SWAT to stop these metaphysical wars. Okay. Um, get your life in order. Clean your room. Clean your room. You got to clean your room. Uh, okay. So, what about Andy Andrea? Any thoughts? What's the Andy Andrea thing? Do you know anything about that, Susie? No, I don't know who that is. She's somebody I type least, I believe. Oh. So what's the question about her? Did C.S. Joseph date her? C.S. Joseph dated uh, Andy Andrea. Well, now she hates him. She's an ESFP, right? She's going to be a little bit strong in her feelings. How can I tell if I'm a TI Dom or an NI Dom? Um... Well, are you a knower or a deliberator? Oh, Zandy came late. Does type determine your hat or does hat determine your type? That's the question. Well, when I'm wearing the sexy hat, I'm an ESFP. When I'm wearing this hat, I'm an ESTJ. Susie right now, I believe, was ISTP. What was it? Mm, I could be an ISTP. I think she's an ISTP with that hat on. Do ENFJs and ENTJs lie about their past due to SI blind spot? I think ENFJs lie about their past due to SI blind spot. I don't think ENTJs typically lie about their past. Um, they'll tell you the takeaway message of a thing rather than the specific details of a story. ENFJs imitate specific details, but they don't have any actual specific details to reference. So they just make shit up. They think that's what everybody does at first, and then they have to learn, oh, that's... They're talking about actual things that happen to them. What type of lies the most? Probably ESFP or ENFJ. But keep in mind, it depends. Do you ever think about ISFPs as a potential partner? I've dated an ISFP before. It's not a good match. Um, How does that even happen? What? ISFP, ENTP. 
Um, I mean, FI downs yes. want what they want. They want what they want. Yeah, it, it's it's more like I mean I I actually pursued and successfully vetted that one, um, which is not something that I would typically do, but. I, I'd wanted her to get with her for a long time. And so when when I got divorced, I saw that she was single. I tried to get on her, and after some effort, I successfully did. I just always thought she was cute. You know, she was, she was dumb as a buck of rocks. <laughs> I just, I found that attractive. I'm not saying it's inherently true of all ISFPs. I'm saying that's something about her that, you know, it's like I said about, about yeah, I do feel this way about a lot of ISFPs that half the time I feel like the only adult in the room, but the other half the time I feel like the only child in the room. And it's really dependent on what sort of thing is being deliberated at the moment. Um... Are ENTPs most likely to end up broke in Vegas along with hookers? I'd say it's possible. Possible. Or maybe broke and alone. Yeah. And it's a hooker in Vegas. Yeah, maybe not with the hookers. Do you think Oprah lied about her upbringing? It wouldn't surprise me. Who's the cool person in the back? It's introverted thinker. It's Susie. Yeah, we do a lot of drugs. <laughs> can Susie do a cowboy accent? No. <laughs> no, I can't. See, they want you to try this, like this one. Oh, but I'm wearing a hat, so that by default defines my accent as the cowboy accent. I want you to try this. Listen. No, no, no. no. I just rode on into town. And giddy up to my horse down to the saloon. Try it. No. Okay. Are ENTPs most likely to get called stinky in their own live stream? Uh, yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly that's the case. I know some really cunning ESFPs. They can be cunning. I feel any doms in gambling is a deadly sexy combo. Look me till you dick me. Uh, I mean, the thing is, here's my experience with gambling. I'll periodically return to it, gamble for a little bit, a little amount, and then, um, and then I'll lose, and I'll be like, "This is dumb. I don't want to do this anymore." What type do you think Dura Idealist who would make statements that is one like that? I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's a, I don't know if that links to type really. I would tend to say it probably oh, links to washed. NI usage over yeah. SI. But you know, probably not Alpha Vordra, I would guess. Mm -hmm. But you don't you don't know for sure. It's hard to say. I mean the thing is I try to take a I try to take a more sensitive approach towards it than I perhaps used to. And in large part it's because I know that there's plenty of as long as people who watch the channel and stuff, you know, and it makes me makes me live by my own rule, which is you shouldn't reduce people to members of their group. Um, MLG, weren't you leaving? I'm pretty sure you were bored and we're leaving. Remember? You look like a dude that lives in a trash that no that would live in a trash can and create a personality theory just to justify living in the trash can how does that make sense i'm not sure either eric i look like a guy who would live in a trash can and create a personality theory just to justify living in the trash can <laughs> and all these people in the chat would probably <clears throat> believe you oh and you would make like the trash People group. Yeah, I don't understand why you're using the conditional mood. Do you? Nor do. Oh, I create the theory to justify the theory. I create the theory to justify the theory that I created. That seems weird. 
I think we have an ESFP in the mix. We might have an ESFP here. I don't want to talk shit about ESFPs either. This is 100% cotton, yes, and uh, we don't have any of these shirts cruelty free. at the moment. They're, it is cruelty free. These were not tested on animals. Fair trade. Uh, they're gluten free, I believe. They're fair, they're fair trade. They're fair trade. They're, uh, if Eric would turn in his t shirt order, we'd have more. <laughs> yeah, we got to do that. I got to do that soon. Uh, it's partial, it's in the mix. We're going to get different color shirts coming out. Another run of shirts. This is run two. Run one was yellow shirts with green with green words on it. Yeah. So you look like ketchup and mustard and green and yellow reminds me of like, I don't know. What about the white? Susie's, there's a couple of, of unique shirts out there. The, the shirt thing is, um, it's done according to the principle that once a shirt has been made, there's never a rerun of that exact same color and text combination, you know? <clears throat> no, MLG, I understand what you mean. I'm teasing you. I'm making fun of you. Yep. It's true. Hard to believe, huh? Well, he's making fun of you, right? Yeah. No. Let's not have fun. That's ever. what happens. That's what's going to happen. You better watch it or I'm going to make him make you kick him. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. I can see how Polar SI might do that too, but the resolution will not be as lasting as Roll SI. Hmm. I don't know what DSP and CSJ strategy is. I guess I would say it's uh let's see. When in doubt, use circular reasoning and hope an ESFP is in front of you. <laughs> I can see how polar I saw it. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's see. Do you think somebody saying they're good at memory details is there the person associated with the details to remember first? Indicative of FE tool, SI, or ESFJ? I don't know. Uh, Abraham, do you think you're good at remembering details? I, I think that that question is so dumb. Like, yes, you can literally tell me, repeat the following words in the order I'm giving you them, right? And I'll repeat as many words as possible. And it'll be like nine times out of 10, I'll repeat most, if not all of them. Do you remember every people? Second. Did you say everybody <coughs> can do that? Do you remember people? I can't do that. Do you no, remember details about people? Questions about me. Do I remember? Yeah. But more specifically, if they're in person. Okay. Like if I meet them in person, because uh, my process is that everyone has a profile, you know, like there's a small secretary in my head that just makes file. Like, okay, we made a file for it. Aren't you so glad you have Kimberly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kimberly yeah. has short hair and mannerisms, like, you know, and then. My brain just goes wild. <laughs> Eric, what do you have in store for your audience? What typology stuff are you working on right now? Trying to figure <laughs> out. Hi, by the way. High five to the fellow on HP in the background. Nice hat. Well, Jax Patrickson. Um, go slow. What typology stuff am I thinking about? Well, That's I've been thinking yeah. about basically, I guess, fields. Some of them are done with it. The the different way. fields, you know, the fact that we've got basically four fields that we can yeah, conceptually yeah. operate on, one being an internal metaphysical, another, another being an external metaphysical, another being an external physical, and the last one being internal the physical. Those that's correlate, that's obviously, to certain that's functions, that's and then less obviously with the others. So, so they function more like fields like in some sense, and how you'd say that the internal physical would seem to be almost entirely the domain of of SI, but then that's not actually true because it's also the domain of FI. And the link between FI and SI is something I'm thinking a lot about lately because apparently because of something Becky said and talking with Kimberly about how 
Kimberly understands foremost her feelings as physical sensations and that when even more difficult to just to talk about really with language that than moisture feelings are physical sensation feelings so being an si dom means having physical states of being that are equivalent to fi states of being namely comfort and discomfort and that 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 has a lot to do with uh um I have a lot to do with <laughs> with that. Really? It took you that long to say with that? Uh, I just got distracted by the thing, so I got that. What do you think about the difference between ENTP, ISTJ, duality, and uh, rare? Okay, so ENTP, ISFJ duality, and ENFP, ISTJ duality. I think that the difference is basically that, you know, it's going to be kind of experienced the opposite way, that where where I'm driven by Kimberly to, to improve my TE, to have better TE and to use it successfully to implement the ideas that she wants me to implement with it, then the ISTJ would be driven to use their TI a lot. And that it, the thing about the duality relationship is it causes the person to use functions that they're, they're less accustomed to using and to learn how to integrate functions that are not habitually natural for them. Because in this environment, I, I use a lot more SI than I would in an environment that were less conducive to SI. It's not just that she provides <laughs> SI for me, it's that the SI environment, SI rich environment, means it sort of naturally gets prioritized more by me. And the same thing with the TI and FE qualities of things. You know, it's like. <laughs> oh shit, it's the FE police. Yeah. Everybody watch out. Keep your graph short. It hurts um, Eric's eyes to read them that long. So, <laughs> the thing to note here is, is the polars as well. So, with with polar TI, the ENFP is going to need to be with somebody who doesn't need to use TI as a tool function, obviously, and who countervalues it. If I were with an ENFP, it would drive me absolutely insane in short order because they'd be refusing to allow me to use my tool function to solve any problems or to deal with anything. We'd be con conflicting on these deliberation functions all the time, you know? It would be a nightmare. So, yeah. How do you fucking INTP? Well, first of all, <laughs> let me tell you. An INFP? No, an oh, I, an INTP. When a man and a woman are very, very much in love, Mike, <laughs> the man takes his penis and he inserts it gently into the woman's vagina like this, okay? Works the same regardless of type. I just wanted to let you know that. It's not actually type specific. Matthew <laughs> Alistair says, hi, Kim. Hi, Matthew. Thank God Matt is here in this chat. Thank God Matt is here. This chat needs some help. CJ O'Connell, inferior SI makes a man do crazy things. Matthew, you should have gotten your plane ticket and come out. <laughs> All right, guys. The most important law in the world of FE is to respect the man with a hard hat. Okay, so horse mumbler one, he brings to, to light the question of MLG's continuing value to the chat or lack thereof. People are saying, you know, don't say something about him or to him because you're going to encourage him. Horse mumbler says, I don't want him to shut up. I want him to say interesting things. So horse mumbler taking more of a proactive humanitarian approach, altruism, saying MLG is not completely lost. Perhaps there's some hope. Perhaps he could learn to troll effectively. And Horse Mumbler, I guess, presumes that prodding him with, with 
insulting remarks is the best way to elicit that. That's certainly plausible. So, you know, let's let's not let's not deny him the if you were like on, the on chance the to learn. It. It's like a um... <laughs> 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 Jewish man. <laughs> Arr. Oh, you think you look like a pirate? Trying to figure out what they call those Mexican cowboys. So I, I was thinking about a duel of some similar with those middle <laughs> two functions changing the flavor for each. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it most definitely does. <laughs> so I mean, Abe and Susie got to see the <clears throat> the the chicken coop that I built, and it's quite the te. I was so impressed as as a construction craft labor. I thought that. Eric had done such an amazing job with the set of tools that he had. It was great. He definitely made one hell of a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. Raul Fernandez wants to know which is the spiritual type. Well, I think there's a couple different spiritual types. You got your you got your INFP style spiritualism. You got your ESFP style spiritualism. Your crystals. <laughs> you got your pyramids. You got your your You're aromatherapies. Just wear that hat. You got your astrologies. <laughs> you know. You don't know. You got you your moisture-based reasonings of all sorts. All your moisture-based reasonings are gonna they're gonna be really into correlations and we're gonna get some magic in there. <laughs> so Kim is good with TE? No, Kim is good with TE. Although she has her moments, she definitely has her moments. <laughs> The other day, she thought uh, she came up with this one, which was, "Hey, let's let's only put in furniture into the salon that's high up off the ground, so it's easy to get the hair out from underneath it." Something I should have thought of a long time ago, but you know. Um, Currently, go in there two days a week and have to vacuum out the whole thing. No, but she motivates me to do te shit. That's the thing. That's the one of the big ways that the relationship works is that the person, the other person's polar causes the Kimberly needs to demonstrate a lot of FI for me. You know, she'll she'll use her six slot function to demonstrate FI so that I can bypass my lame ass seventh function. She won't be upset when I'm trying to use it that much, but she countervalues it. She won't be upset that I'm not using it enough because she countervalues it. Same thing with TE and me. <coughs> Although TE is more is more hilarious sometimes like you know when kimberly decides to put the uh this kitchen shelving thing directly in front of both of the light switches so <laughs> i can no longer turn on and off the lights now that's some polar to eat uh um ESTP is such realist that sometimes it's annoying. I guess they are realists. They're pretty non-spiritual. I'm a little bit spiritual. I certainly incorporate some magical thinking into my um, into my worldview. Yeah. But I would say I'm more religious than spiritual, but not really religious either. Just sort of deist, deistic. Um, so astrology is an RPG. Is this is an example of TE Polar. I was lifting a heavy water can to transfer the water. TE Polar person was yelling from the side to hold a napkin to the ridges rather than realizing that it would. It was already sounding like yes. Uh, right. Well, yeah. You know, Kimberly has an adorable habit of. As I'm in the middle of moving something heavy, deciding that maybe you should go someplace else right now, which sort of precludes me from, um, which precludes precludes me from doing the successful TE necessary to move the thing in the first place. Which is normally you go and make sure that you're going to move it out along a given path where you moved everything out of the way and it's clear and everything. But if if we get switching plans midstream like that, then Sometimes it can be difficult to do that. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that, C.J. O'Connell. That that indeed, I that the 
ENFP will find the ISTJ's FE polar adorable in some way. Just like I find Kimberly's TE polar adorable. She doesn't seem to really find my FI polar that adorable. Maybe she does. I don't know. No. <laughs> you don't? It is not adorable in the least. Huh. Well, I think it's adorable. Anytime your FI comes into the bedroom or into any room, I call Becky. <laughs> Becky, Eric is... Eric's feeling moist again. Furiously crying while pounding my vagina. Are you dampening my No, tenders. Abe. <laughs> they probably didn't even hear me. <laughs> they, they probably did. These are pretty good microphones. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I'm about ready to... Uh, call it a night? Call it a night. I need to trim this mustache. It keeps tickling my nose and yeah, in you an need annoying to trim fashion. It. That will happen tomorrow before work. Yeah. And I need to uh, I need to find another hat besides this one. This is a Susie hat. So it's going to fit on top of this hat like this. Because obviously this hat's meant to be a double layer hat. Okay, so thanks everybody. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese, and if you do, you can eat twice as much tomorrow. Thanks, Freddie Chandran. <laughs>